you're tuned into Tackle Fanatics TV. And in this episode of TFTV, you get a chance to check out ESPs, Zigbugs, and Mono. Today we're at Oxley's on the Linear Complex and we're going to be looking at some new Zig gear that we've just launched. This includes a range of Zig Bugs and Zig and Floater Mono, which is generally used either as a hook link or as a main line. Now, ready tied flies aimed at Zig fishing have been available commercially for a few years now, um, but ESP's association with them goes back quite a long way, actually all the way to 2004 when a guy called Dave Drake, who's our rep that covers the southwest of the UK, he's an expert fly angler, fishes for the England fly fishing team and also a very adept fly tyre. Um, he tied up some dedicated water boatman imitations for Terry Hearn and also Dave's brother Mark Drake, who's a very keen carp angler. Now they were fishing on Pingewood near Reading at the time and I'm not sure if it was Terry or Mark, but they noticed um, that there were serious hatches in the spring of water boatmen. Now what water boatmen do is they, they rise up to the surface, they take in like, almost like a gulp of air, and this ends up being like a little air bubble on the belly of the water boatman, and then they dive back down again. Now they, they found that the carp were absolutely gorging on these water boatmen in the spring, and, but they were actually quite difficult to catch. So Dave, Dave Drake came up with, with the idea of tying some replicas on proper carp hooks, so you had the, the strength of a decent hook, um, to imitate these water boatmen. And as I say, the rest is history. They caught a serious amount of big fish on these, um, on these zig bugs, early versions of, um, but it was kept a very closely guarded secret at the time. But now they are available to all. So we're going to have a closer look with Kev Hewitt, who's here today, a bit of a zig connoisseur, uh, when you use them, how you use them, and how Kev fishes them. Um, so we'll have a closer look in detail at the range. So now we're going to go into a bit more detail on zig fishing and the new gear, the bugs and the mono, with Kev. But firstly, Kev, zig fishing, when, are you, when do you sort of mainly target that tactic? To be honest, when I first started zig fishing, it was always a summer thing when you see fish cruising round up in the upper layers with yeah. their backs out the water. But the more and more I've sort of tried zig fishing, the more I've come to realise spring is the best time of year by far for zig fishing. Now, don't get me wrong, you can catch fish all year round on zigs. I've caught them in winter, spring, summer, autumn, any time of the year. Yeah. But spring seems to be the one for me where I've had some massive hits, loads of fish in springtime. So probably from late February, March and April is absolutely king for the zigs. And um, I think the reason why potentially, the water's warming up because, yeah. because the temperatures are getting warmer. Um, the fish just seem to spend a lot more time in the upper layers. Now you don't physically see them cruising around with their backs out yeah, the water yeah. or anything like that. Sometimes you don't see any fish at all and you can put zigs out, you know, only a couple of foot below the surface. Mm. Sometimes two or three foot below the surface in early spring is the one. And I've had numbers of big hits, you know, multiple double takes, lots of fish in spring, you know, fishing a couple of foot below the surface. Um, one of the reasons, possibly because of the spring hatches, yeah. you know, when... Got to be the main reason, it, isn't it? Exactly. Really? When, yeah. when, when the light, sort of, the, the daylight hours are longer, mm. all li everything starts to come alive again and yeah. you've got all the living organisms, you know, creeping up and th there's lots of things floating around in the water column and it, it has to be the one. It, it has to be the, the, the fly hatches and everything coming through the water, which gets the fish going and searching in the upper layers for anything sort of floating around. Yeah, and in the winter, I suppose, um, there's not a lot hatching, but you get those periods of high pressure, you know, cold nights, bright sunny days, a little bit like today, when they tend to get up in the upper layers because they're warmer. And yeah, again, definitely. I think um, definitely the higher pressure, you mentioned mm. high pressure, certainly I found when, whenever it's high pressure, the fish always seem to be fairly dormant in the upper layers normally. Right. They don't tend to sit low down in the water, they tend to sit further up and just be sort of milling about and sometimes you're never going to get a bite in a million years on the bottom on bait because yeah. they're not there and they're not really feeding. Mm. But sometimes just sticking that little bug in front of his face, it's just making him it's almost like asking a lure, the isn't question, it? isn't yeah. it? 
you are, they, they look at it, they either eat it or they don't. And, mm. and at that odd occasion, they just suck it in and you've got one. You've got yeah. a winter capture of a fish caught on a zig. And, yeah. you know, it's happened to me a number of occasions. Mm. I've had some very, very nice fish through the winter on zigs. You catch them at night as well on zigs, which you think would be yep. more of a visual type approach, wouldn't you? But I know you've caught them on, on black foam at night. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. I've caught, I've caught a good number of fish at night just, just on a little black bug. Yeah. You know, um, I can't put my finger on it. How a fish can find a little black bug, bit of foam in the upper layers, just, just sort of sitting there yeah. in the middle of the night is beyond me. But I'll tell you what, they do find it. And as I said, I've caught loads of fish mm. from doing it. And it seems, um, you know, over the years, black does seem to be the colour, doesn't it? Whether it be, yeah. you know, and we've purposely tailored this range um, to have the super buoyant black foam bodies. They've all got a flash, a different flash of colour. There's four in a packet. They've each got a different coloured belly. There's um, red, fluorescent green, green, and a sort of pearlescent colour, which almost replicates the air bubble I mentioned earlier. But black does Black's, seem to be yeah, the one, 100%, doesn't it? 100%, definitely the one. If you're fishing a single zig just out there on his own, yeah. it's always been black for me. Do you think it's because it's the silhouette against the sky, maybe, or is it? Uh, to, if I'm being totally honest with you, I don't honestly know exactly mm. what draws a fish to eat a bit of black foam. Yeah. But they do, and it, it works. I've tried. Don't get me wrong. I've caught on other colours, but black has definitely been the one yeah. since my horseshoe, um, Lynch Hill days, even bluebells. Just a single bit of black foam has always been the one. Yeah. And to be honest. If I'm zig fishing now, just casting single zigs out, I won't use anything else other than black foam. Yeah. Just because I've got that much confidence in it, I know that it works. Well, I change the winning form, exactly. It? And I suppose a lot, like for example, the water boatman, a lot of other natural bugs do tend to be sort of dark brown, black in colour. So it's a good starting point, isn't it? Yeah, and it certainly well, works. Yeah, definitely. The water boatman looks superb. You know, yeah. I, I've done some filming with them underwater and everything, and they look, they really mm. do look realistic. And I've caught some nice fish on them. I, yeah. I was testing them quite a bit last spring, and again, I had some cracking fish using them, so they definitely work. Yeah. The zig bugs are tied to ESP curved shanks hooks and are available in sizes 8 and 10, barbed and barbless. There's four hooks in a packet, and each of the bugs has a different coloured belly. It's available in a bright green, bright red, a pearlescent colour, which is sort of designed, this was the original design to replicate the, the sort of iridescent air bubble on the uh, water boatman's belly, and also a sort of fluorescent yellow. Now obviously the, the black foam is ultra important, but the little flash of yellow on the belly certainly doesn't do any harm. So Kev, going over to Zigmono now, I know you like to fish the zigs on a, on a long hook link, um, depending on the depth of the water. Yeah, you want you, you need some of this fin diameter pretty clear in the water so you can't see it almost invisible. Yeah. And it needs to be really strong as well. And with this stuff, that, that's absolutely perfect for my zig fishing. You know, I've landed a lot of big carp on zigs mm. um, and that stuff never lets me down. Yeah, it's got a very, very high knot strength for its diameter. It's semi buoyant, so Combined with the ultra buoyancy of the zig bugs, it, uh, a, you know, one of the bugs can hold the hook link up in 12, 14 foot of water overnight, no problem at all. So let's have a look at your lead setup, Kev. See yeah. how, you, how you fish it. Okay, for all my zig fishing, I always use this, this lead setup. I'm not a big fan of adjustable zigs. Right. They may have their time and a place, but I'm not a fan at all. I've always fished zigs popped up straight off the lead basically, so yeah. that, that relies on a long hook length to whatever depth I'm fishing. Mm. So if I want an eight foot zig, obviously I tie an eight foot hook length. Yeah. I fish it where, where you're allowed on lead core leader, just simply so that I can quick change between leaders, mm -hmm. whether I want to be fishing on the bottom or switch into a zig. Yeah. Um, I use an ejector lead clip. So for, for most of the time when I get a take on a zig, I'm, a lot of the time I'm big fish fishing, yeah. sometimes it can be quite weedy, I want to eject the lead. So the ejector lead clip and I cut the uh, tail rubber down. So I've just got, got a little, little sliver there. on there. Yeah. So when the fish picks up the zig, uh, the weight of the lead sets the hook. So yeah. I always use the bigger lead. And when it shakes its head two or three times, it pops off. Right. 
and then you're in direct contact with the fish, and you don't have a big lead just swinging around, sort yeah. of like on a long hook thing. That's a yeah, dragging in the weed and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So you're in direct contact. It's super strong, and I've landed some very big fish. In fact, last year I actually had two catfish over sixty over sixty pound on zigs. Really? Yeah, yeah, no problem <laughs> at all. So you you know you're in direct contact yeah. with you know, real strong material. Last thing you want to do is get a bite from a big fish and lose it because your, your hook length's not strong enough. Yeah. So this stuff is spot on. One other thing I would also say is a, a real important part for me is the Streamliner rig boom. Now this is the stiffest boom that I know of and, and it's, it's critical really because when you're casting out that long hook length, a lot of people are worried about tangling and, and the stiff boom always kicks the hook yeah. length away from the lead. So it makes it's it almost, almost impossible, it's to almost tangle, impossible it? for, the, for the hook length to come back and tangle around the lead. So as long as I feather it down, stop the lead just before it hits the water, yeah. the hook link flicks over the back, the hook bait slaps the water and it just feathers down nicely. So it's almost impossible to tangle a zig. So that's the setup. That's what I use for all my zig fishing and it's, it's not going to let me yeah. down. Oh, very simple, isn't it? Very simple setup, but it obviously works. So that's it really, that's the um, new ESP Zig Bugs combined with Kev Hewitt's expertise. If you have them in your armoury next spring or any time of the year really, but especially in the spring when the bugs are hatching, you can't go wrong. You've been tuned in to TFTV. Sample Fanatic stock an extensive range of ESP products at the best prices around. We'll stock a vast selection of NTAP of more of the leading manufacturers. To view our range, log on to www.tacklefanatics.co.uk. Member Tackle Fanatics offer finance to make your tackle purchase more affordable. Tight lines and wet nets, everybody at TFTV.